Welcome back to our day four coverage of CES 2025. I know, I know, it feels like we've been at this crazy tech show for a lifetime already, but trust me, there's still so much cool stuff to talk about. Today, we're gonna dive into flying cars, yes, really, AI-powered pillows, because apparently snoring is a bigger problem than I realized, a brand new gaming controller, some super intense robots that can do handstands, and so much more. Grab your snack of choice, settle in, and let's geek out together. So first up, let's talk about the Xpeng Land aircraft carrier. I kid you not, we've been promised flying cars for years, and while so many designs at past tech shows seemed borderline sci-fi, this one is truly stepping it up. Picture a Cybertruck style vehicle with an EVTOL, that's electric vertical takeoff and landing, by the way, drone module in the back. This beast can house two people as it flies. Xpunk says this is going to be the first mass produced modular flying car and apparently has 3,000 intent orders already, though I'm honestly not sure how many of those folks can swing the $300,000 price tag. Let's be real, that's quite a chunk of change. For most of us, it's probably something to watch from afar, but hey, if you're stuck in insane traffic every day, maybe daydream about picking one of these up and flying right over it. Now for my constant snorers out there, the AI motion pillow. I'm telling you, nothing kills the vibe in a bedroom more than the thunderous roar of a snoring partner. This pillow uses AI to detect when you start sawing logs and gently inflates internal air cushions to reposition your head. It's designed so you don't even notice that the pillow is shifting you around. The snag? It's priced at a fairly steep $699, though a limited post CES discount can bring it down to $399. Still not cheap, but maybe your partner's good night's sleep is priceless. Moving on, let's talk about Xreal One Pro AR glasses. Now, Xreal has already impressed a lot of people with their AR gear, but this Pro version goes further. The One Pro has a 0.55 inch micro OLD display, a 12 MP camera, and an X1 chip that should enable advanced spatial computing gestures down the line. They even threw in Bose audio, so these definitely aim to be premium. The frames look less bulky than before, which is a big plus for anyone who wants to actually wear these in public without feeling like a cyborg. The price is $599, not pocket change, but also nowhere near Apple Vision Pro territory. Now let's chat about the robot mania going on. We've got Unitree Go 2, B2, and G1 robots. Unitree's Go 2 is pitched as a new creature of embodied AI and it loves to show off its handstands. The bigger, scarier sibling is the B2, which we've seen do barrel rolls, cartwheels, and crazy parkour. These things are basically the next level of robot dogs, while the Go2 is more consumer friendly and costs around $1,600, the B2 seems set up for more intense scenarios. Hopefully not a robot uprising. <laughs> the G1 is a humanoid robot that sells for around $16,000, which can do some pretty wild bow staff combat. Seriously, they keep showing these robots with weapons, which is both impressive and slightly terrifying. Progress for the Go is a combination of better funding, lower costs, and easier controls. The website indicates that in 2026, Beatrix will be the only ant out there in the future. Next up is the Mimo from a Japanese company called Guy. Picture a bedside table that sprouts spider legs. The idea is that it can carry items around your home or hospital. Some folks say it looks spooky, but hey, if it can fetch me snacks, maybe I'll overlook the creepiness. Another big trend at CES this year is robot vacuums with arms. Roborock's not the only one. There's also the Dreamatech X50 Ultra, which has a robot arm attachment and extendable legs, so it can climb over small ledges. I guess the ultimate dream is a vacuum that can dance over your staircase, pick up your stuff, then deliver coffee straight to your couch. If that's not enough for you, SwitchBot is introducing a K20 Plus modular robot system. The base is a wheeled robot, and from there you can add a vacuum module, multiple robot arms, cameras, air purifiers, and a tabletop. Essentially, it can be your butler on wheels. Imagine relaxing in bed while the SwitchBot K20 Plus tries to bring you breakfast. You do have to load it up yourself, so you're basically cooking, then handing it to the bot, then scurrying back to bed so you can pretend it's delivering breakfast. But still, baby steps. Gamers, I haven't forgotten about you. Let's talk about the MCON Gaming controller. This thing is reminiscent of the old Sony PSP Go. It's a slider controller for your phone and uses a magnetic puck, kind of like MagSafe, 
to snap onto Android or iPhone devices. It's only got Bluetooth connectivity, so there's no physical pass-through, but the company says it's still low latency. It's a Kickstarter product, so proceed with caution, but the early pledge price is $99, which isn't too shabby. On a similar note, Razer showed off something called Project Ariele, a gaming chair with an integrated fan system that can blow cool or warm air onto your back while you play. Uh, as far as wacky Razer CES prototypes go, this one is actually pretty practical. They also teased Project Ava, an AI gamer co-pilot that supposedly helps you with in-game tasks though details are super vague. If it starts playing the game for you, is it even gaming anymore? You be the judge. We also have something for folks who want to control their devices telepathically, kind of. The Naichiki neural earbuds can read micro gestures like jaw clicks or eye movements, allowing you to do stuff without physically touching your phone or yelling into a voice assistant. This could be life-changing for people with mobility issues, but it also feels like stepping into the future of mind control for everything. No exact price yet, but we should see them within the next year. If you need a robust Wi-Fi network outdoors, maybe you want to stream your VR session in the yard or run a drone show in your driveway, check out the TP-Link Deco Outdoor Mesh System. They're unveiling two nodes, the Deco BE25 Outdoor and the Deco BE65 Outdoor. Both are Wi-Fi 7 compatible for better speeds and can handle harsh weather conditions with IP65 ratings. No official pricing yet, but these could be real lifesavers if your house is built like a fortress. Let's not forget home security. The Hive Smart Home Security Locker is a Bluetooth enmated box to keep porch pirates at bay. Delivery drivers can drop off your packages inside with a one-time code, and the box is basically anchored so thieves can't just run away with it. It has a photo portal for drivers to snap a pic of your delivered item. It starts at $299 and requires a $10 monthly subscription, so this might be for serious online shoppers. Then there's the base case, a mobile workstation that's literally a suitcase with two 24-inch monitors inside. It has a bunch of ports, HDMI, DisplayPort, Thunderbolt 4, USB-C, Ethernet and USB-A, plus pass-through charging. You can add telescopic legs for extra height. Yes, it weighs 10 pounds, so it's not exactly a breeze to carry, but if you're a multi-monitor fiend who works on the go, you might love this. Look for it on Indiegogo next month. For the power hungry among us, Pluggable's PS10CC is a 10-port USB-C charging hub that can deliver up to 100W total. There's a priority port on the left, so if you really need to juice one device ASAP, that's your best friend. It's got a sleek metal design too, so it won't look like a plastic brick on your desk. You can pre-order it now for $100, which is pretty reasonable given how many devices you can plug in at once. Now, let's get to some smaller oddities before we wrap up. Hisonic has the Air Studio One, a handheld microphone that comes with wireless earbuds slotted inside. You can slide them out and use them as in-ear monitors while performing or recording. It's basically the next evolution of karaoke meets pro audio. The promo video was a bit bizarre. It referenced humans discovering echo in caves or something like that, but the mic itself looks neat. Shift Cam's Plank is a tiny 1TB or 2TB SSD that can plug right into iPhones for storing massive video files. If you're someone who loves filming ProRes 4K 120FPS content on your iPhone but hates dealing with iCloud, this might be a solution. They're launching a Kickstarter next month. I do love the idea of being able to record and dump footage without paying monthly for storage. On the smart home side, Google has made local control for Google Home devices easier by integrating the Google Home runtime into 40 million devices. That means your Matter-compatible gadgets might talk to each other locally instead of pinging Google servers every single time. Let's hope they keep that around and don't shelve it in six months. You know how these big companies can be. And finally, let's talk about the Windows 11 fiasco. Microsoft is gearing up to push Windows 11 upgrades in 2025. They're calling it the year of the Windows 11 PC refresh. But apparently they're rolling out some very aggressive full screen pop-ups on Windows 10 machines that are crashing the system. It's like, please upgrade now. And then bam, the system fails. Not exactly the best brand image. Let's hope they refine that approach so it doesn't feel like we're being coerced by a drunk guy on the sidewalk yelling, the end is nigh. Anyway, 
That's it for me today, folks. We covered everything from the dream of taking flight with the $300,000 Xpeng land aircraft carrier, to an AI-powered pillow that might end your snoring woes, to supercharged robot dogs and robot arms that are either extremely impressive or slightly horrifying, depending on how you look at it. CES 2025 has been absolutely packed, and I've tried to squeeze in every last detail so you don't miss a thing. So stay tuned, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and let me know in the comments what product has you drooling or trembling in fear. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.